We are Two Blind Brothers. We run a casual wear clothing business, but we have set some time aside to talk about our eye condition and answer some of the questions that we get every day through our community about Stargardt's, which is a disease that we've had since we were five years old. And today we're talking about careers and work. Um, so obviously the big challenge with Stargardt's is recognizing faces, reading small print. Uh, those are both two critical things for a lot of jobs. So we're gonna tell you about our experience with finding jobs prior to Two Blind Brothers. Uh, this is just our personal take on it. Some people may have a totally different opinion, uh, but this seemed to do okay for us. Um, Brian, what is your recommendation for somebody who has a vision impairment as it relates to the type of work uh, they can do and be effective at. Everybody is very, very different. So you could be effective in any role. In my experience, I interned at a big bank in finance and it was reading Excel spreadsheets and doing very, very detailed work every single day. I was not very good at it because I was slower than everybody else. Just having to zoom in on something and then move to the next cell, not the easiest thing. That's not to say that you can't do analytical work. I got my degree in statistics, so kind of a two different sides there. For me, the best type of work I could do was leveraging my strength of interpersonal skills. I believe that a, that a career in sales, business developing, branding, advertising, or marketing where you're more focused on creating interpersonal relationships and you're not as required to do diligent, detailed work every single day, i.e. finance, uh, being an accountant, being an auditor, you are gonna be able to succeed because your job responsibility doesn't rely so heavily on vision. When you're interviewing or searching out a new job, when do you tell the recruiter that you have a vision impairment? Great question. I do it basically when they send me an offer letter because if I can get through the interview process, if they like my resume, they like my work experience and I can prove that I have capabilities, I tell them when they send me over an offer letter. Not, to, not so that I can hold them hostage, just so they, un, they don't have a caveat against me or a delusion on, of, of my capabilities. Once they send me the offer letter, I bring up that I do have a visual impairment. There will be a few, few extra needs that I will take. Uh, and frankly, for me, my entire career, that has only been an extra monitor, just so I can zoom in on one monitor and focus and have a larger picture on the other. That's been my experience. Everybody is a little bit different. Maybe your vision has deteriorated to a point where it's hard, you can't hide it in the interview process. Maybe they're having you take a written test uh, in the interview. Um, you know, so you're gonna have to kind of figure that out for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think the overall principle is that this is not the biggest thing in your life. Your education, your experience, your strengths have a lot more to do with how successful you're gonna be in that role than your vision impairment. Um, it's really just a mention so that you can bring in the tools into the office uh, to make you successful. So that's the way that we generally approach it. Um, I think there is an element where we don't wanna scare off uh, an employer by just volunteering that information so that they think it's the most salient thing you know uh, about you as a candidate other people are gonna have different opinions this is just sort of what we did Brad when you were working what was the best tools that you had for helping get around be having star guards I use the zoom function on the MacBook Pro to do everything uh, I use the zoom function on my iPhone, the triple tap, uh, to do everything. I use text-to-speech, which is funny, I put it off for a very long time because I can see very large print, and so I never thought I needed text-to-speech. But a friend of mine, who is a very successful female entrepreneur, 
who has perfect eyesight, was using fast text-to-speech to get her emails in a car we were sharing at one point. And I thought, wow, if she's using this and this is great, I should really explore this. And it's been awesome for me. I create hotkeys on my laptop that let me highlight and have an article or an email read to me. And while it's happening, I can type a response, I can type notes. It's super, super effective. And when I was using a Windows computer at work, I would have one monitor that was strictly for Zoom. So it would be all the way zoomed in and it would follow my mouse. And on my other monitor, I would have the full screen so I knew where I was looking. It just gave me the ability to have the best of both worlds. But outside of that, I used a CCTV a little bit when I had to read any documentation, but that seems like it's a way of the past now. And so I would say that there's very few job functions that you are not gonna be able to do because of your visual impairment, as long as they are not strictly focused on looking at tiny numbers. And I also wanna say that even though, <coughs> even though we found that we did better in jobs that didn't require as much vision, it's important to point out that we have a number of friends that have severe eye conditions that are in roles that traditionally re require a lot of vision. We have a friend with achromatopsia that has bad vision that's a very, very successful lawyer at a major grinding law firm here in New York City. He works his butt off, it takes him a little bit longer, uh, but he has other strengths too and he's very effective. We have another friend who graduated Harvard Law, went on to be a New York lawyer for 10 years and then moved on to a different role who is completely blind. So it isn't to say that you can't do the job, it's just you might need to find some more workarounds. This is what's worked best for Brad and I. Governor Patterson, former governor of New York, was obviously attorney general and then governor. Um, we have a friend who's on the board of the Foundation Fighting Blindness with me who started an accessories uh, company. You have Brian and I who started a clothing line. Um, so I think it's important to really nail down that if you have strengths and passion in a certain area, you can certainly be successful. It may take some creativity, some resourcefulness, uh, maybe an adaptation, but don't let it hold you back. This has been Brad and I's video on work and career. However, it is just our experience. As we said, we would love to hear from you at what jobs you found have been best suited for you and any questions that you have about being in the working world down in the comments down below, because as always, it is amazingly helpful to hear more voices for folks who are looking for information. So thank you so much, and we will see you in the next video.